I mentioned we have Susan Goldberg with us. I'm super excited. Uh, I've got this slide on here, but I'm going to let her really share a little more about her experience that has led to her expertise in this field and what we're going to be talking about with generational gaps and working with those um, up and coming talent. But uh, on, a, on a note where she would probably be a little too modest to share, I'll go ahead and let you know that Susan is the President Emeritus of the Executive Search Roundtable and serves as on the Newark Academy's Board of Governors, chairing the Career Development Committee. And in 2019, she was actually honored with a Woman of Distinction Award for her work with Newark Academy. She serves on the Board of New York Human Resources, People and Strategy, chairing the Membership Committee. And she currently lives in New York, working out of New York, uh, and is there with her collection of eyeglasses and her dog. Now, I love- Quick comment. So people are gonna be wondering, wait a second, she's got this collection of glasses. Where are they? How come she's not wearing any? In our new crazy world of working from home, since my, uh, since my computer screen is so close to my face, I can't wear my glasses because I need them for distance, not for close up. So even though you're gonna see in my logo that there's my glasses, because everyone thinks of me as my eyeglasses, you're not gonna see them today. I'm sorry. I'll wear them for you today, Susan. <laughs> okay. What are you missing when you're not seeing beyond the superficial? It's costly. What is it costing you? When you're not seeing beyond the surface, you could be missing out on revenue, additional products, cost cutting, and more. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I'm Susan Goldberg, and my company is Susan Goldberg Leadership Consulting. I welcome you and thank you for being willing to talk about reinvention. I find that reinvention is one of the most difficult, challenging subjects there is. So if you are here, you have courage. You are my superheroes. And thank you. You may be here because we're connected in some way. And you know that my training is unique and I provide a lot of value. Or you could be new to this leadership community and the topic spoke to you. Or you could have found this through social media, uh, mentioned from Urgent or me. However you came here, I believe that you were being called to step into a greater leadership position. And you realize that in our uncertain circumstances, they call for reinventing leadership or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be taking the time. This is important to you. Ah, all about reinvention. I have lived reinvention inside and out. I've studied it. I have analyzed it. And I know that with reinvention, if you use these three elements, you can increase opportunities, commitment, and productivity. And we only have a small amount of time. So, Let's step through this because I can only give you a small nugget. Would you mind if I told you a little bit about a personal story? It's my personal reinvention story. Every day I get to experience delight because I get to work as a catalyst with my clients so they can realize their potential. I built a business doing what I love to do. And I've had to reinvent myself many times before I got here. Okay, I'd like to share one of my reinvention stories. Earlier in my career, I was a marketing director and I was hired by Bloomingdale's to relaunch a prestige brand under Bloomingdale's. I had never been the entire marketing department for such a big brand before. And I had lots of bosses. I had the creative director, the head of sales, the head of this particular brand at every single one of these stores, the head of merchandising. I reported to all of them. 
And there was no one there to train me because the person who was in this role previously, who'd been there for years, left months before. I was creating my own roadmap. A few months in, the head of sales calls me into his office. Leave, go. You are a disaster. You cannot do this job. You should be in the back office crunching numbers. You should not be working with people. Yeah, don't let the door slam behind you. Well, I felt ashamed, lousy, embarrassed. And I lived with that for a few months until I realized I don't have to agree with my former boss. I can make my own version of me. And what had he been missing when he judged me so quickly? He didn't see what was really there and all my talents and what I could have brought to the brand when he fired me so quickly. This caused me to connect with people deeply, people who'd been in similar situations, who hadn't had the necessary training, who didn't feel valued in their career, who didn't know which way to turn. So I took this experience, truly deeply connecting with people, and I took it to a new field, executive search. If anyone knows anything about executive search, it's all about people. You are finding people, you're interviewing people, you are doing reference checks for people, you're onboarding them. And I rose from research associate to associate, to principal, to partner. Before I started my own executive search firm, I was the first female partner in a 12 office executive search firm. And as president of my trade association, which Jamie brought up earlier, the executive search roundtable, I had increased membership to 200%. And then in 2017, guys, 2017, my firm, my own firm was recognized by Forbes as one of the top executive search firms. I brought some of that same reinvention and that connection to people when I started Susan Goldberg Leadership Consulting. And now I'd be working with people who, for whatever reason, were facing obstacles and challenges in their current role. And I would work with them so we could remove those blocks and they could succeed and reach the potential. The potential. Companies could hold on to them longer and they'd be able to implement what they were meant to, to bring. When I work with someone, I teach them to look at reinvention from all sides. See, there's the glasses. I love those, by the way. And because I learned that the ability to reinvent is critical, I believe that I'm being called to share these three elements for you to increase productivity, commitment, and opportunity. I want to make sure that you walk away with certain things. I want to make sure you walk away with implemental strategies you can use right away on these three elements of reinventing leadership. And when it looks to you both as an individual and within an organization, that there are five generations in the workforce today. Everybody brings value. And in a world, today's world, where everything is short, curt, texting, emails, instantly judging or assuming, there's a lot more that you are missing out on. Making the time and having the curiosity to get beyond the surface paves rich roads for self-discovery and potential. And if you reinvent leadership through the lens we're talking about and use these three elements to get beyond the short-sightedness the dismissals, you have access to contacts and resources you never realized before. Leadership today is about getting results and bringing out the best so an organization thrives. Understanding people are individuals 
And as humans, they bring along with them certain benefits that come from when they were born. Also, understanding every generation has merit and brings along certain qualities, resources, and experiences is to embrace all of what people bring to the organization and why it's important to value and retain all of them. Who gets this? All right, ready to jump? There we go. Recognize. When you're recognizing someone, you're truly seeing them as special and unique, this breathing, wonderful human being. You see them. They're not a role or a title or a category or a generation. Everyone, regardless of their background, age, role, title, wants to succeed and accomplish and get stuff done. And they want to feel valued, appreciated, and learn how to be even better at what they do. 40% of employed Americans say they'd put more energy into their work if they were fully recognized as what they uniquely bring more often. This is according to Harvard Business Review, which is a publication of Harvard Business School. And also David Novak, who's the former CEO of PepsiCo and the former chair of Yum! Brands. An individual and an organization has value. It's important to understand the totality of what they bring, that value, their gifts, their experiences, their talents, their abilities. This way, you can understand what they can personally bring to an organization. If you consider them only as a member of a group or a generation, you fail to see them. Okay, now we have our quick exercise. So I have one question for you and put it into the chat box. What is the most important thing that someone can bring to an organization right now? So yeah, a lot of empathy, compassion, knowledge, experience, which is an interesting thing to talk about when we talk about generation and how long we've been in the workforce. Yeah. Creativity, innovation, different ways of thinking, thought leadership. And I love, yes, Marty, humility. <laughs> Ah, you know, okay. one of the things that I'm always looking for when I'm um, when I'm looking at people who might become my future coworkers is adaptability and coachability, because every organization is rather different, and people's ability to adapt and be coached is just so critical for their ability to grow in a new place with new people. Thanks, everyone, for everybody's input. Have you ever thought about this question before? All right, I have a, a story to tell you more about recognition. I had a business colleague, her name is Sally, and Sally is a certified financial planner and also an accountant. And Sally said to me, Susan, there is a young professional at my client's office. I can't ask her to do anything because she's a millennial. And you can't ask a millennial to do anything. I said to her, Sally, have you ever spoken to this young professional before? Have, do you know anything about her? Have you ever thought about, because she doesn't have that much experience, what she might wanna know before you ask her to do something? As you can imagine, all the responses were no. One no after another. What was Sally missing and what was it costing her? When you're asked to do something, wouldn't you like to know how it relates to you, the context? And wouldn't you like to be considered as an individual and not as a member of a generation? I would. How do you do that? All right, second element, here we go. Ta -da! Redefine. Once you have seen someone, you can then experience them, experience them in a new light when you redefine them. To redefine what you had thought previously, which no longer matters. So let's talk about redefining. 
The ability to redefine yourself is a bold, daring, and purposeful choice. It doesn't just happen. You have to make a conscious, intentional choice and then follow through. For instance, forging a new path, changing habits, thought patterns, and your inner circle of friends. This is from lifehack.org. Can you imagine redefining something that's been the same for 200 years and all of a sudden it's not? This is what happened in 2018. A group of representatives from 60 countries got together and voted to redefine the meaning of a kilogram. I bet you never knew this. Yeah, no longer basing the kilogram on a physical object, it will be based on a factor in physics, Planck's constant. And Planck's constant describes the behavior of elemental packets of light known as photons. And this value will remain the same for all times. Wow, right? 200 years. Now I have a redefinition story for you. Going back to my executive search days, I was working for a company by the name of Ward Howell. Ward Howe was being acquired by a bigger company, LaMalle Amram. That was the time, if, if any of you were around then, where there was just lots of mergers and acquisitions. I had been hired, because I progressed to that point, I had been hired as a principal by Ward Howe. So it was in my communication. It was on the website. It was on my business card. I owned it. When LaMalle Amra took over, they decided, well, I'm a young professional. I'm going to have to re-earn my stripes as a principal. So they demoted me. I became an associate. Makes you think. And I did think. I thought, maybe I should quit. This really is not great. And then I looked at it creatively. And I thought, what happens? if I were to decide on redefining what a title means, redefining a need for one. So I took it out of everything. I printed business cards, which no longer had any title on them. In my communication, I no longer had any title. And it's funny. So I caused people to look at me as a business development professional and not as an associate. So I redefine what even having a title means. Have you ever found in your career when you didn't think that your title accurately reflected your responsibilities? I'm sure we've all been through that. Okay, here we go. Third element, woohoo! Retain. Once you see someone and you have redefined their value, you want to hold on to them because you know what you have. You know what their potential is. Whether they're a team member, an associate, a resource, or just an alternative voice, you want them to stick around both for you and for the organization. In order for an organization to retain promising enterprising and driven employees, according to Jim Clifton, who's the CEO of Gallup, they have to answer yes to three questions. And I'm gonna say these twice in case you miss them. At work, my opinions count. Someone encourages my development and I have the opportunity to do what I do best. So yes to these three questions. At work, my opinions count. Someone encourages my development, and I have the opportunity to do what I do best. According to a white paper from O.C. Tanner, O.C. Tanner is one of the largest manufacturers of corporate awards. According to this white paper on engagement and retention, that spans 10-year study, get a load of it, 79 of people quit their jobs because they're citing lack of appreciation as their reason for leaving. 79% leave 
because of lack of appreciation, right? Um, you may have actually been in that place before. Okay, I have a story that could have gone that way. I have a client who was a managing director at Accenture. She didn't feel like her boss and her client saw her. She didn't think they valued her work, her integrity, her professionalism, her leadership. She felt like a failure and she was ready to quit. And that's when she reached out to me. We worked together and I discovered she had all of these senior level contacts at the company and she wasn't talking to them. We made a plan and the plan was she would talk to them and lay, plant the seeds for a new role. So she, she had these conversations and she planted these seeds. And we discovered these senior executives at the organization, not only did they, they see her, they valued her contribution. The last thing they wanted was for her to leave. Given a few months time, she found a new role. It was a new role with much greater visibility globally. She was reporting into a, an executive, a leader, who was actually able to teach her leadership skills and other things she hadn't been able to receive before. And for the first time, she had a team reporting into her. And that team adored her. And the reason they adored her was because they understood that she listened to them. She really heard them. If you feel like you're being heard and appreciated and your voice matters in your role and at your company, how likely are you to wanna to leave? Bringing this to the bigger picture, the majority of organizations are suffering right now. How many of them would benefit from increased market share, increased revenue, new products, leveraging what and who they already have, but they don't know? It starts with leadership. You, you can reinvent what it means to be a leader. When you find yourself making quick assessments, you can use these three elements, recognize, redefine, retain. Again, recognize, redefine, retain. I know they're right in front of you. See beyond the superficial into the potential for increased productivity, commitment, and opportunity. Productivity, because if people are recognized, they want more of that. So they want to do more. Commitment, because if your work is being appreciated, like Jim Clifton had said earlier, you are more bonded to it. You're more bonded to the company and the people around you. And opportunities, because now that you see individuals' skills and resources, you can utilize them. If you find yourself having a conversation and you feel like you're on another planet or you're speaking another language, you can use these three elements to discover who this person is because what is essential is invisible to the eye. Thank you so much, everybody. And here's my contact information. This will, uh, if you do this exercise, it will take you through the first of the three elements, and that is recognize. And you can have a lot of fun with this. You can think of one person from each generation that you think is just special and unique, and you, you want to tell them how wonderful they are. And then you're going to email or give it to them or call them however way that you want. But you're basically writing a testimonial for them. And that's one person in each generation and those other ages. And recognizing just how wonderful and how important they've, they've been to you. And it's wonderful to be able to do this, but also how you feel after you've recognized someone. It's not something I can even communicate. You have to experience it yourself. Thank you.
Susan, thank you so much for your time and, and for sharing your stories with us. And to my roundtable community, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next week. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.